So my name's uh, Professor Jonathan Napier. I work at Rothamsted Research, which is based in Harpenden in Hertfordshire, and I'm interested in making an alternative, sustainable source of fish oils in GM plants. Fish oils are a really vital component of our diet. Uh, fish oils contain the particular fatty acids called omega-3 long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acids, but that's why I call them fish oils, because it's easier to say. Uh, and fish oils can really, in our diet, can reduce our risk of cardiovascular disease, uh, and so they are, um, th yeah, so they're really important for maintaining a healthy heart. One of the problems is that in the UK there is not enough uh, consumption of fish oils in, in our diet so in general the UK population is absolutely not eating enough of these omega-3 long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acids. Normally in our diet we would get fish oils from eating oily fish such as mackerel, uh, and sardines, but in fact fish oils are, uh, or the, the fatty acids that you find in fish oils, aren't actually made by fish. The fish just accumulate them by eating uh, phytoplankton microalgae in their diet. So basically we're getting stuff indirectly that is initially made by the algae. But normally in our diet we would get them from eating oily fish, although some people take them directly as supplements as well. So one of the problems from a nutritional point of view is that the fatty acids that you find in fish oils are not the same as the fatty acids that you find in vegetable oils. So unfortunately vegetable oils don't act as a direct replacement for fish oils. Although some vegetable oils do contain omega-3 fatty acids, they're not the same omega-3 fatty acids that you find in fish oils. So uh, unfortunately you, can't, you can eat an omega-3 rich vegetable oil like flax or linseed, but it doesn't give you the health benefit, it doesn't give you the reduced risk in cardiovascular disease that you'll only get from fish oils. Fish farming is a great way of producing fish, it's a great way of producing enough animal protein for human consumption, but one of the absolute requirements that you need uh, for, as part of the diet for fish is, is fish oils, is these omega-3 long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acids. So about 80% of all the fish oil that comes out of the ocean every year, and it's a big number that comes out of the ocean, it's about a million tonnes, so 80% of that goes to feed other fish in fish farming. So there's a, there's a problem there in, in that, that you know, we need to try and, if we can find an alternative sustainable source of these omega-3 fatty acids, then we can maybe use that to replace some of the, the fish oils that we're putting into fish farming, and then that'll leave more for human, direct for human consumption. We've thought about this in terms of what would be a, a sustainable source of fish oils and so what we think may be a solution to this, to this problem is to use GM crops, to make a GM plant that, is, that has the capacity to make these, these fish oils. So as I said before, vegetable oils don't have any of these omega-3 long chain polyunsaturates. So if we can engineer plants to make these fatty acids, so give them a completely new capability that they haven't had previously, then maybe this, our GM plants can be a, an alternative, sustainable, terrestrial source of fish oils. In terms of trying to make a fish oil, in a GM plant. How you do that is maybe slightly counterintuitive because you don't need to take the f genes from fish to make a fish oil. Fish oils aren't made by fish, fish oils are made by algae uh, in the marine environment. And so what we need to do is take the genes from the algae and put them into the plants to then allow the plant to have the capacity to make these omega-3 long-chain polyunsaturates. So this has been a long-term strategic project at, at our institute and we've we had the, the germ of the idea, you know, I like to say in the last millennium, so which it was in, 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 in the mid-1990s. So we've been working on this project for nearly 15 years. And for us what's really exciting is that it's actually come to a point where now we can actually see our research you know, reaching, reaching the goal that we set and also moving it out of the lab and into the field, which is really also another major step for us. I mean, from my, my point of view, one of the key things in trying to 
do the studies that we've, we've been doing for, for quite a long time is understanding the basic metabolism and understanding biochemistry. And actually, it, it, it turns out that you don't need to use incredibly sophisticated techniques to, to, to do that, at least in the field of, of lipid metabolism. So we use a technique called TLC, thin layer chromatography, which is you know, quite an old technique, but it's still a powerful and very useful way to look at lipid metabolism. And you can separate out the different lipids that you find in, 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 in any species by using TLC. And we, so we use that technique, and it's a very effective way to look, at, to look at metabolism. It gives you the information that you need and allows you to then sort of div devise and understand uh, the system that you're trying to manipulate. Now, you know, we've, we've, we still use TLC, but we also now use very advanced triple quadrupole iron trap mass spectrometry, which is a much longer word and is much more difficult to, comp to, to explain, and I don't really understand it. But it's a, you know, it's a great technique for, for looking at, at lipids. But TLC still works. Just because it's old doesn't mean that it doesn't work. Initially, most of our research was done using Arabidopsis as a, as a model system, and the reason that we did that was because it was quite easy to transform, to do the manipulations. Uh, it grew pretty quickly, uh, and, and we assumed that it would give us the information that we needed to then, hopefully then, we would move forward to, to translate it, our research into a crop plant. Uh, so I think model systems are really useful, but in terms of, you know, we've always believed that if we want to have an impact, if we wanted to really make a difference, and you know, I think it's really important to make a difference with your research, then ultimately you're going to have to move from a model into a crop. So you know, that's why we started with a model, but then we've translated our research into, into a, working in a crop, which in our case is Camelina. The way we get our algal genes into our, into our GM crop is we use uh, agrobacterium, so agrobacterium being a natural soil-borne bacteria that can, can move DNA from, from itself into a plant. So we take our algal genes that make omega-3 long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acids, we make sure those genes are put under a specific promoters that allow the genes only to be expressed in the seed of our plant and use agrobacterium to do the hard work for us. So it moves the algal genes into our camelina plants. Our camelina plants then, then take on the algal genes and ultimately then they're able to make, to make these omega-3 long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acids. In terms of the amount of, uh, of fish oils that our camelina make, they have, have exactly or even maybe slightly better the levels of the uh, omega-3 long-chain polyunsaturates that you would find in a fish oil. So from my perspective, we've uh, got to a point where we can say we've successfully made a terrestrial source of fish oils in our GM camelina, which is really exciting. I, th I think there's the, I think there's huge opportunities for for people coming into this field now. I think it's we're you know we're in a really exciting period where there's lots of advances in the area of metabolic engineering and synthetic biology, and all those technologies will be applicable to trying to engineer plants to make useful products for for mankind, for health and nutrition, and for all sorts of important things. So I think there's there's great opportunities, and. But it's still, you know, there's still lots and lots to be done. So, you know, I'd really encourage people to, to, to come and work in this area because, it, you know, it, it's, it, I wouldn't believe for a second that everything's done. There's, there's lots and lots of exciting challenges ahead. I think there are some great, great opportunities for young people coming into this field. I think the emerging areas of synthetic biology and metabolic engineering can be di directly applied to uh, trying to enhance plants by genetic engineering to make lots of useful and important nutrients for human health and nutrition. I think, yeah, there's, there's a great opportunity there. And I think uh, I'd really encourage people to come, in, come into this field because you know, sometimes people think everything's been done, but in fact, really, we're just at the very start. So there's lots and lots of exciting research to be done.